Let's have a look at this then. This National 5 paper. Here we go. Paper 1. Known calculator. Number 1. Two marks for evaluating this subtraction. Straight away you can see it's a wee bit nasty because you're taking a bigger fraction away from a smaller one. Still the easiest way to do addition and subtraction is to stick with mixed numbers because then you can just do the whole numbers separately from the fractions. 6 take away 2 is 4. 5 and 3 both divide into 15 so change them both into 15ths. Whereupon that's 3 times it so that'll be 3. That's 5 times it so that'll be 5. And don't let that put, let that put you off. 3 take away 5 means you're actually 2 15ths short of 4 so that means you've got 3 and the balance of the 15 3 and 13 fifteenths. Because the alternative would be to go for improper fractions. 5 6 is a 30, that's 31 upon 5. 3 2s are 6 and 1 7, that's 7 upon 3. That avoids the problem of negatives, but it just throws you into bigger numbers. You still get the answer. Same as before, make them both into fifteenths. So I'll just put the one big line instead of keeping them separate because I'm going to join. But now I'm going to have to say, that goes 3 times, 3 times that's 93, 3 into that's 5, 5 times that's 35, now I've got to work out 93 take away 35, well it's 58 over 15, and now I've got to figure out how many 15s there are in 58, well it is 3, and there's 13 left over. Didn't encounter any negatives that way, but there's an awful lot more arithmetic. So here, this next one, solve algebraically. That means no guessing the answer. Solve algebraically this inequality. Well, you still just do it the same way as an equation. So the first thing is going to be, let's multiply out the brackets. So we've got 11 minus 2 minus, and that'll be 2 threes, or 6x is less than 39. Now, those two numbers can join together to make a 9. So we can subtract them from the other side, which means your negative 6x is actually going to be less than 30. Now the last step is divide, but you have to watch when it's an inequality. If you divide by negative, reverse the sign. So it'll be 30 divided by negative 6. So finally you've got x has to be a number greater than negative 5. 30 divided by negative 6, 6 into 30 goes 5, but one of them's negative. So hopefully you remember to reverse that sign. Number three then. A circle full of lines, full of right angles. But the first thing to do is identify what do they want. The size of angle B, B, D, F. Well, that's that doubler at the top here. So that probably means that, just taking this diagram now, that I'll have to find these two separately. But where's all these right angles? As soon as you see a diameter, any triangle sitting on it is a right angle triangle. Well, straight away, without looking at the rest, part of that angle comes from this triangle. It's right angled, that's 64, so that would leave 26. So that part's 26, I just need this bit. Now that could come from either this little isosceles triangle, or it could come from what is another big right angle triangle. But there's another right angle here, which is this radius meeting the tangent. So there's a right angle. And that's handy because this part of it's 77, so this part here must be 13 to complete the right angle. Now I can just use this little isosceles triangle because that's a radius and that's a radius. That's isosceles. So the two base angles are the same. So that's a 13. And finally I can say, well, my angle BDF is going to be 13 and 26, which is 39 degrees.